All right, hello everybody. I'm back once again. God is still speaking through visions and dreams. Yes, he is. Are you all still keeping up with what's going on in the world? Are you waiting for the second return of Jesus Christ? Is it real to you? Do you really expect him to return? Hmm? Are you making preparations to meet the Lord? <clears throat> um, well, where am I going to start? Um, I want to talk to you some more about the uh, some things you can expect to come in the future. Uh, there's a script here in John 14 in John 14 29 okay John 14 29 the Lord told his disciples he said I have told you all things the Lord told his disciples I have told you all things so that when these things happen you will believe Okay, so that when these things happen, you will believe. Prophecy is not to just to know the future. Okay, prophecy should strengthen your faith. If God speaks and says uh, and lets you know that something, uh, something in particular is going to take place, and it take place. And it happened just like he says. It should strengthen your faith. Okay. He told his disciples. I have told you all things. So that when it happened. You will believe. So I'm going to talk to you some. I'm going to give you some things that you can expect. <clears throat> in the not too distant future I guess. Maybe in the distant future. But you can expect it. Okay. Uh, and, and of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody heard about this T.D. Jake scandal. I, I don't know. I can't say the man is guilty of what they, what he's accused of or not. I don't know. But I know Jesus Christ warned us about uh, deceivers that are coming. Okay? Deceivers. If you go to Deuteronomy... 13th chapter it explains clearly uh, how you how you can detect a false prophet okay false prophets usually lead you away from God okay go to Deuteronomy read the 13th chapter of Deuteronomy and you'll see false prophets they lead you away from God their teachings their deeds, their acts, uh, their beliefs usually lead you away from God. It leads you into sin. It don't call they don't call you out of sin. Okay? A false prophet, uh, just because a person predicts something and it comes to pass, it doesn't make him uh, a true prophet. And because someone predicts something and it don't come to pass, that doesn't make him a false prophet. Okay, because the Bible said we see through a glass darkly. The Bible also said we know in part. So a man of God may know in part. He may not, he don't know everything. Okay, he may just get part of it. And, and he don't see the, some things he may not see clearly, so he may miss it. But one sure thing about a false prophet, whatever he, he's going to try to lead you away from God. He's going to try to get you to break those commandments. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's one thing you can expect from a false prophet. He's going to try to get you to break those commandments. And this is the reason why the Lord said that... Uh, he called them workers of iniquity. Okay? 
workers of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew you, ye worker of iniquity, or you promoter of lawlessness. Okay, you promoter of lawlessness. You who uh, um, increase in lawlessness. The disciples asked Christ, he said, they said, Lord, what will be the sign of your coming? Give us the sign of your coming. The sign of your coming. Now, his coming don't take place until Matthew 24, 31. Okay, at the end of the chapter. Matthew 24, 31. That's when his coming takes place. At the end of the chapter. But he told them, and the, in the fourth verse, at the beginning of the chapter, the first sign to watch out for is false prophets, false teachers, okay, uh, false Christ. That's the first thing he told them to watch for. They said, Lord, what will be the sign of your coming? He said, watch out for deceivers, false Christs, false prophets, false teachers, charlatans. Okay? The first uh, horse of the apocalypse in Revelation, I think, I think it's Revelation 6. On the white horse is a false Christ is a deceiver in the last days yeah Revelation 6 Revelation 6 and 2 is a deceiver the white horse the rider on the white horse Jesus Christ said that the first sign to look out for before his coming are deceivers False Christ, false teachers, uh, false doctrines. Okay, that's the first thing to look out for. So what I'm seeing now, and I'm seeing uh, this this guy. What is this guy? Uh, William something. He got the he got his members um, dancing doing the the swag and the. I never heard of no swag until I saw that on the video. The swag and the walk it out or something. It looked like a nightclub up in there. But this is going to increase, y'all. This is what the Bible, this is all a part of the abomination of desolation. Okay. When the, when the Antichrist goes into the temple of God and declares himself to be God. This is what this, this is part of it. Even in the churches, the church is going to commit great sacrilege. The members in the church. Okay, there's going to be all kind of things going on in the church, in the church. But unfortunately for them, unfortunately for them, the Bible said that these people that cause scandals in the body of Christ, the Lord said that they will be taken from the uh, from out of the midst of His people and be cast into furnaces of fire or incinerators. So this is really this is really not good. Don't follow the crowd. I'm telling you, don't follow the crowd. People seem to just they know they know we're in the end time, and they seem to be getting worse. Especially church members. You go to church every Sunday. I guess I guess the problem is they just don't have good leaders. Okay, they don't have good leaders. They're not the leaders are not teaching them what they should know. The leaders are, are, are treating sin as something uh, small, something unimportant. But the wages of sin is death. Sin is going to bring death. So, um, the Bible said that uh, in Luke, where's that? Luke, Luke, Luke. Let me find it here. Luke 21, I believe it is. Luke 21. No, wait a minute. Yeah, Luke 21, 22. Luke 21, 22. It says, 
For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Okay? These are the days of vengeance, that all things that are written may be fulfilled. You know what this is saying? This is saying, within a very short period of time, three and a half years exactly, three and a half years, all the things that... Uh, that are written, that has been predicted, that's supposed to happen to Israel, that's supposed to happen to the church, that's supposed to happen to the world, that's supposed to take place uh, in, in, our, in society, in our culture, all the things that are written, okay, is going to take place within three and a half years. All the prophecies. Even the prophecies that have prophecies that have already been fulfilled, it will be fulfilled. They will be fulfilled again. Okay, what has been the Bible said shall be again. Shall be. So all the things that have been predicted, and and many of the things that have already been done, the abomination of desolation have already happened once before. Go to Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, 7th chapter. You see, that has already happened once before. It's going to happen again. Okay? It's going to happen again. There's nothing new under the sun. The Bible said. What has been shall be again, the Bible said. So all these things are going to happen again. So there's going to be a lot of things taking place within a very short period of time. Within about th within three and a half years, the, th the tribulation is only three and a half years. Okay, I, I, I did a study on that once before. It's only three and a half years. So everything that's been predicted here, the Bible says, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen within a very short period of time. Um. I'm going to give you some things God has been talking to me about. He told me this coming. Uh, some of this stuff I've already, I've already mentioned. Some of this stuff I've already mentioned. Okay. But I'm going I'm to bring it up again because sometimes, you know, it's like God. I, sometimes I don't make that many videos because I feel like I'm repeating myself and I'm saying the same thing over and over but it feels like the Spirit of God urges me to go and repeat myself. Say these same things over and over. Listen. He said in John 14, 29, I told you, I've told you beforehand what is to come. So when it comes, you will believe. This is what I've been seeing that's coming. Okay. I saw the dome of the rock will be destroyed. It will be bombed. Now, what is this going? What is this going to? Um, what is this going to mean for us? I don't know. But you know, that's the that's the Temple Mount. That's where uh, I think Solomon built his temple. Uh, Israel built their temple. The Solomon built Israel's temple on that Temple Mount, where the dome of the rock is right now. What is this going to mean? I don't know. But you can expect the Dome of the Rock to be destroyed. Uh, from what I understand, they got they got some blasphemous writings up there on that. Blaspheming Christ and blaspheming God on that Dome of the Rock anyway. But you can expect that Dome of the Rock to be destroyed. So when it happened, the Bible said, you will believe. Right? You will believe. Okay. Um, and maybe maybe they will build the temple after that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're going to build the temple in some other place altogether. I don't know. But the Dome of the Rock will be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed. Um, the U.S. will betray Israel. It's going to happen. The United States is going to betray Israel. And when the United States betray Israel, the world is going to betray the United States. 
the world is going to betray the United States. When the United States betray Israel, the United States allies are going to betray us. Britain, Germany, Japan, Canada, all our allies, France, whoever they are, they're going to betray the United States. The United States is going to be set up for destruction, okay, for war. The United States is going to be attacked within and without, okay? Uh, the United States will betray Israel. It's going to happen. But when you see these things, I've told you these things, according to John 14, 29, so that when it happened, you will believe. It should strengthen your faith. Uh, you know what I believe God told me? He said, President Biden doing all this falling down, stumbling and falling. He said, that's, that, I believe the Lord said, that's a, that's a sign that your, your nation is falling. That is a sign that your nation is falling. But uh, most of us, I don't think most of us uh, notice or, or, or believe that, but I believe God said, this is a, that's a sign that your nation is falling. Another thing, another thing is coming. Another thing is coming. Uh, the Bible said that in Revelation, in Revelation, Revelation 12, Revelation 12, John said, I saw a, and there appeared a wonder in heaven, a wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, a wonder in heaven, behold, a great red dragon. The Bible tells us in Joel that we will see signs and wonders in the heavens. That's what it says. Signs and wonders. I can't even find it now. We will see signs and wonders. And when John saw this great wonder in heaven, he saw a great red dragon. And the Bible tells us, I think it's in Joel. I'm trying to find this real quick here. Joel. Man. Joel. I can't find the verse. I know it's in the book of Joel. But it tells us we will see, we will have wonders, we will see signs and wonders in the last days. We will also see what appear to be red stars that's going to appear in our, in our skies. That will be a wonder. There's going to be many wonders that's going to appear in our skies. But one of the wonders we're going to going to see in our skies is our red stars. A cluster of red stars going to appear in our skies. Okay? This is the sign of the red dragon. Alright? This will be the sign of the red dragon. This will also be the sign of Christ's return. Okay? When you see these red stars, cluster of red stars, we, we will only have three, four, five years to go. Okay? I believe anyway. We will only have three, four, five years left when we see the, the appearance of these red stars, the wonder, in, a wonder in heaven. Now, as I said, the Bible said that uh, 
he tells us these things so when it happens, you will believe. All right. <clears throat> all right, guys. That's pretty much all I had. That's all, pretty much all I got. Um, but these are these are some these are some things you can expect um, in the future, and hopefully this will this will encourage you to hang in there and keep pushing forward. Okay, because when Christ comes, the millennial reign will begin. The millennial reign will begin. And for those of us that are ready, we're going to go into the millennial reign with Christ. And we will have the freedom that we have always wanted, the freedom we have always dreamed about. We will be free. We will be free from laws. We will be free from rules. We will be free from uh, sicknesses, uh, pains, and sorrows. We will be free from people abusing us and controlling us, we will be free from all that. Okay? We will not, our lives will not be governed by laws, rules, but our, law, our lives will be governed by love, life, liberty, peace, joy, happiness. Okay? That, our lives will be governed by those things. Not by law. Okay? So, I don't know about you. It's hard to imagine something like that. Our lives will be governed, governed by liberty. Okay? When you do whatever you do, you'll do it because of liberty. Because of freedom. Not because of law. When you do whatever you do, you'll do it because of love. Because of joy. Not because of law. You go anywhere. It'll be because of liberty. It'll be because of the joy in it, not because of law. So we have a lot to look forward to. We have a lot to look forward to. Uh, and beware, beware of false teachers, false prophets. Man, some of them guys, some of those prophets, so-called prophets, everybody's a bishop, everybody's a prophet, everybody's a, an apostle. You know, nobody is a janitor. You know, nobody's a helper. Nobody's, you know, everybody's up in the air. The great uh, chief apostle now. We got chief apostles. But okay, all right, that's all I got. You guys, uh, you guys take care and hold on to Jesus Christ with everything you got. There's a... Uh, Cause I, I can, you know, we can see the falling away taking place right now. We can, we can clearly see the falling away. People are becoming less and less interested in church, and church is becoming more of an entertainment center. It's becoming more of an entertainment center than anything. Okay, people are not going there to getting, getting the word to be free. Okay, people are more vexed with demons now than ever, and when they go to church, they can't get free. They can't get free because the church has become a, a place of entertainment, like a nightclub almost, like a club. All right, God is still speaking through visions and dreams. I hope I said something to help you. Keep your hands in God's hands until the very end. Okay, God bless you.